Welcome to our first attendees. Welcome to our webinar um, from the series of the subject webinars. As you know, today we are going to talk. So yeah, umbrella topic for today, as you could see, is studying business management and MBA in Germany. My name is Georgi. I will be today the co-host and co-moderator of the webinar. And as, as you know, during these types of webinars, always we have uh, guests with us which is amazing. And I will introduce them quickly also. Uh, but before we move to our guests, uh, yeah, I will have a very a short presentation for you. And just one note regarding the Zoom settings, Zoom webinar settings, for those who are not that much familiar with Zoom, uh, and especially with webinar uh, setting, you can see the Q&A button. It is just next to the chat button, dear attendees. So this is uh, this Q&A button is already active, and it will be active until the very end of the webinar. And you can use, that, use it to send as your questions and your questions all of your questions will be addressed live by one of our guests in around i would say 40 45 minutes latest so when they're done with their presentations with their study programs then we'll have an uh, open the floor for the live q a session so that's why my suggestion would be to stay tuned if you want your to hear answers to your questions uh, so yeah the here's agenda for today we have got guests from Berlin School of Economics and Law. We will start with Stefanie Edentraut, and she will talk about MBA study program, full-time and part-time, and then we'll move to Anne Bruchanski, and she will talk about Master of Science level program in international business management. So before we move to the interesting part, let me bore you a little bit <laughs> with some general information who is behind today's webinar. So uh, yeah, if you've Googled, let's say, studying uh, in Germany in English language, then I'm more than sure that our name would pop up there. So we are Germany's largest database when it comes to English uh, taught study programs. We have over 2,700 degree programs listed in our database, bachelor level, master's level as well, of course. And uh, yeah, our main mission is to help international students who would like to study in Germany. And we do that through three key ways. One of them is through our study finder. So you can go to our website and you can find a section of study finder where you will see all of it. So now it's a small version that you can see, but yet then uh, on our website, you can see the full version with all of its filters, which allows you to find programs, not only according to location or according to discipline, but even according to your IELTS or TOEFL scores, it can go so deep and even to according to the mode of it application, for example, whether the program is using UniAssist or direct application. So, and much more, there are much more filters and I, my suggestion would be to check them out at your leisure. Also, we have lots of articles regarding studying in Germany. For example, if you need APS certificate, we have article on that. If you need to write CV or letter of motivations, if you uh, if you need assistance with that, we write about that. Studien colleague, um, yeah, scholarships, rankings, international, domestic, uh, blocked accounts, and so on and so forth. Lots of topics, all for free. Check them out. Um, and last but not least, the webinars. So we organize around 150 webinars per year on different topics. It can be general topics regarding studying in Germany. It can be scholarships in Germany, UniAssist, Visa, etc. But also we have uh, specific subject specific webinars where we have specific uh, special guests. And this is the webinar that, like the one that you are attending right now, but on different subjects. It can be, for example, um, studying philosophy in Germany, studying biology in Germany, studying mechanical engineering, and so on and so forth. All of the webinars that are already planned, you can find them uh, on our website in the webinar section, and you can uh, sign up for them for free and also attend them for free, of course. Our team is quite international. We are based, but we are based in Hamburg, actually, in northern Germany. Uh, but we are also all over Germany and all over the world. That's where we are counseling in uh, different languages as well. Um, so uh, for those who do not know what to expect when it comes to studying, for example, MBA or international business in Germany, uh, we have subject pages on each of that subject and many more subjects where you can find some general information. For example, what are the rankings of universities that are offering subjects in, the, in this discipline? What are the tuition fee ranges that you, sh you should budget for, you should expect? Also regarding different, different application, admission and language requirements. So this is kind of a general information to serve as a first step towards understanding the context and also to have a to to see this bigger picture what of what does it mean to study these subjects in germany uh, also uh, our tip uh, is that when you are searching for the right program or right university profile it's important not to be guided by single elements or single aspects like only looking at the fees only looking at the rankings, only at the city names, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Of course, it's a, this is all important, uh, and you should collect them these all aspects together. But go a bit more further, taking into account your background, 
your professional aspiration, your interests. That's why, um, yeah, our suggestion is collect these aspects, all take into account all these elements together if you want to make the right choice of the program and the university. Also in Germany, uh, there are two key types of universities that I would like to share with you. So one is called Universität or university in English. And another one is called uh, University of Applied Sciences in English, but in Germany, it has some different variations. For example, Hochschule, Fachhochschule are some of the uh, popular variations of that uh, wording. And the key difference is in focus. So when we are talking about universite type of university, we are more talking about research and theory orientation in general. And in case of University of Applied Sciences, we are usually talking more about application and practice. If you need more information about that, of course, drop me an email. I will explain more differences, but this is the key that you should know right now. And in addition to the aspects that I mentioned before that you should, should take into account while searching for the right program, also, if you are, are trying to find programs in our study finder, my suggestion would be uh, to play a little bit with words. Don't be too rigid with that. And by doing that, but combining all this together, you will drastically increase your chances of making an informed decision uh, of the study program, which is, if you ask me, uh, one of the most crucial steps towards your successful career. All right. So with that being said, let me now move to our speakers. Let, let me once again introduce them. So uh, we are talking about Hochschule für Wirtschaft and Recht Berlin. Berlin, I don't need to explain where Berlin is, but you can still see on the map where it is located. And yeah, so Stefanie Edentraut will talk about Berlin, uh, so full-time study program and part-time study MBA. And then we'll move to Anne Bruchanski and she will talk about Master of Science level program in international business management. That being said, let me stop my screen share and invite our guests to take the floor, please. Thank you very much, uh, Georgie, for the warm introduction and uh, welcome everyone to this uh, online information session. My name is Anna. I am a program coordinator and uh, I brought my colleague uh, Steffi. She's also a program coordinator and we are happy to introduce you to the programs that we are yeah, kind of in charge of. Um, let me share my presentation with you. Um, here we go. Um, we are representing the Berlin School of Economics and Law and especially an institute, the uh, Berlin Professional School. So we are, yeah, working at a public school. Um, so we are not a private business school. And uh, yeah, as I said, we are part of the Hochschule für Wirtschaft und Recht Berlin, and uh, our school has approximately 11,000 students, and it's located um, in the city center of Berlin. So it's a really nice uh, study area. It's uh, kind of a residential neighborhood, uh, but super, yeah, central, so to say. It takes you only a few, few minutes uh, by public transport to get to Berlin's hotspots. Our institute, the Berlin Professional School, is focusing on continuing education. We are offering masters and MBA programs uh, since 1992. So we have, yeah, decades, several decades uh, of experience, and uh, yeah, we are well, well experienced uh, in this field. Our programs or our English-speaking programs attract, yeah, people from all around the globe. So you will be part of a very international student body. And apart from the diverse nation nationalities you will meet, you will also meet people with different academic and professional backgrounds. So you don't have to have um, previous studies in management. You can be, for example, an engineer and like say, okay, I want to have a career switch. Uh, I want to try something else or I want to, yeah combine my engineering experience with management and leadership uh, competences. So this is uh, or this is when we step into the picture and this is when our study programs step into the picture. And um, before we have a closer look at the programs, I would also like to introduce you to our career and alumni service. Because when you start your studies, the career and alumni service um, is also a very essential part from the very beginning. Some of our students already know, you know what they're going to do after graduation, and some are kind of a, in a transmission process, and they're still trying to figure that out. And our career service helps both uh, kind of like categories to, to guide them on their way uh, to find 
out where they want to head professional wise or to reach their career goals. So they uh, offer a great portfolio of different workshops, um, company visits, graduate talks, networking opportunities, because networking is very, very important. Like establishing your network while you are studying can be very, very helpful to you know, get, for example, an, a working student job after, as while you are studying or get a job afterwards. So during your studies, you already you know, have your career, yeah on focus as well and to trying to prepare your transition from from the studies to the work but uh, let's have a closer look at the first study program that's actually the master of science international business management that's the program i'm coordinating it is a 15-month program it's a full-time program so you will be studying uh, on campus from monday to friday um mostly yeah, five days a week, but there will also be some days where you don't have classes, but they, are, they shouldn't be considered as days off because you need time to do your homework, to prepare the next session, to work in groups. So it is kind of a full-time study, a full-time job, more or less. This year, we're going to start on the 16th of September, so in approximately half a year. So we are looking forward to, to that. We're counting the month. And uh, within that program, we have two specializations. One is international management and the other one is international business management and leadership. So you can kind of set your focus within this program. And uh, there are two more special features. Um, it's uh, the international study visit. So we take um, our group um, yeah, abroad on a one week trip. And uh, we also take students on a digital business safari. The safari usually takes place in Berlin and it's also a one week uh, experience to apply all the knowledge you gained throughout your studies. As you can see uh, right next to the picture, we have received the FIBA seal and that shows uh, that we offer high quality education. It's a national accreditation seal. And as we are talking about continue, continuing education, tuition fees apply. And they sum up to 16,600 euro and they cover all academic expenses. And uh, it's it's quite a decent amount, but this uh, don't don't be worried or afraid. You don't have to pay everything uh, in advance. There are several payment plans available. And you might be a bit surprised saying, okay, why, why do we have to pay tuition fees? But this is because it's, we are talking about continuing education. So this is not the regular bachelor master structure. This is for people who already have work experience who have different academic backgrounds. They are not in line with business and management and to give them you know, the possibility to switch their career or take them to the next um, level, continuing education programs are like provided or offered. Uh, let's have a closer look at the, the content of the program. It's international business management, so it's it's not a master program that focuses on one topic, for example, marketing or finance. You will get um, yeah the overall picture. So you will have core modules that uh, deal with HR, with economics, with finance, with marketing and strategy. And uh, as we have those specializations within the program, you will also have um, electives that are like in line with your spe specialization and you can choose them at the very beginning of the program. So in October, you get an introduction to each elective and figure out, okay, which one or which ones are of, great, of the greatest interest to me. And then in the third, um, let's say, term, um, you will write your master's thesis. This is your final academic project. You don't have classes anymore. You will just work on that topic and um, yeah, and graduate in November. So start in September and you graduate 15 months later in November. This is just a really quick overview. There's so much more to say about the program that what our aim today is just to give you a broad overview because we don't want to overwhelm you with the information and details. This is just for you to figure out, okay, this is something where you are looking for if yes, we are of course happy to have an individual consultation session or a phone call, whatever you like. But this is really just to give you the main facts and then we take it to the next level.
and um, I hand over to my colleague Steffi. Thank you, Anna. A very warm welcome also from my side. Um, my name is Stephanie or Steffi, and I'm the uh, coordinator for the full-time MBA program. We um, offer two different kinds of MBA programs. One is part-time and the other one is full-time. Um, I focus on the full-time today, but um, if you are interested in the part-time program, you can also contact me and I will just um, connect you with my colleague who's coordinating the part-time MBA program. Um, the language is also um, uh, of instruction is also in English, so there are no German skills necessary in order to study at our school. Um, the duration is also a 15 months full-time program for the full-time MBA and for the part-time it's 24 months. Um, it starts also on the 16th of September this year and it also includes an international study visit. As soft skills are very important, um, we have a strong focus on leadership and soft skills um, in order to prepare our students to become great leaders. But I will go into that um, into detail on the next slide. We have an international accreditation, the EMBA accreditation, um, which guarantees high quality um, of the study content. And um, we also have the um, golden seal of the FIBA, which is a national accreditation. And tuition fees is 19,900 euros. Um, it's also, um, I mean, it's possible to pay this in different installments and to decide um, between two different payment plans. Um, and it covers all academic expenses, such as books or um, papers you need to um, to have for your uh, lessons or, and also the study visit, of course. Uh, here you can see the rough um, or the roughly um, designed structure of the MBA program. It has three parts, the core modules, the um, electives, and at the end, the master thesis. The core modules, they cover all um, classic um, business courses or economic courses like um, marketing, human resources, accounting, and so forth. And as I said before, um, we have a strong focus on um, leadership and um, personal development. So um, it it is, um, very important and it um, guides you through the whole program. So right from the beginning until the end. So um, you have the possibility to monitor your um, skills development during your studies. Um, we work with different trainers. Um, we work in small groups. We do, um, for example, we do have a, a management reflection seminar where individual profiles are created and um, also um, individual coachings will take place. And then we have the electives, uh, which will be introduced to you in October. And um, you can decide uh, or you can choose three out of five electives and you can specialize um, during the elect uh, choosing the electives. And at the end, um, you will write your master thesis. Um, also, you don't have any classes anymore while writing your thesis. And you can um, also specialize on a special topic. You can choose um, a project from a company or you can write your own business plan. And um, our supervisors will guide you through that process. Here you can see two alumni statements. Um, it's also always helpful to talk to alumni or to um, current students. So if you're interested um, in, talk, uh, in, yeah, in talking to some of our alumni or students, just send us an email and we are happy to connect you with them. The admission requirements for both programs are a completed university degree, so a bachelor or a master's degree, and excellent English language skills. Um, for the Master of Science, International Business Management, you need to have at least one year postgraduate work experience. And for the full-time MBA, or also for the part-time MBA, um, you need to have at least three years of postgraduate work experience, which means the work experience you have gained after you have graduated. Uh, 
Um, the application process is um, also for both programs the same. We have enrolling admission, um, which means that there are no fixed deadlines for your application. Um, you can upload all your uh, the required documents on um, via our online application tool, which you can find on our website. If you if something is missing, please don't worry. We will check your application and we will ask you to hand in the missing documents. Um, and after we have reviewed your application um, and found it, uh, found it suitable, the video interview follows with the academic director. And this is a great opportunity to get to know each other and to um, ask all your questions. Um, yeah, just to find out if the program is the right program for you. And after the interview, and um, if you have got an admission, you have um, yeah, you have three weeks time to decide um, to accept the study place. Um, so there are many good reasons to study at our school. First of all, we have an international accreditation. Uh, we have super motivated professors, um, which are still engaged in the business environment. We have an internet interactive teaching style, small groups um, and personal support by faculty and staff um, and reasonable tuition fees. We also offer German language classes in the first term um, of your um, studies um, from October until December, because we would like to encourage our students to uh, learn German. These courses um, are not mandatory, so they are not part of the curriculum, but they are included in the tuition fees, so you don't have to pay extra for that. And last but not least, we have a large and worldwide alumni network, which is also very, very important um, for your future uh, career development. So if you have any questions regarding our programs, please feel free to contact either Anne or me, and we are happy to support you. Um, besides the two of us, a great big team is working for you um, in order to, yeah, to offer you a smooth study experience. And this is our favorite uh, picture. It's the picture of one of our graduations with many happy faces. Yeah, this is the end of your MBA or master journey and um, hopefully the start of a new professional career. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much to both of you for a very informative and also very concise <laughs> presentation. It was everything was clear I, I, from my perspective, but there are some questions, which is good. Let, and I would uh, invite you to open the floor for the live Q&A and let us uh, start uh, with the questions. So let me actually maybe follow the list as long as possible. Okay, first question is how many electives can one choose? Uh, I think this was a question for Anna because yeah, during your presentation it popped up. Uh, yeah, please. Yeah, um, you can actually choose uh, three electives. Uh, and uh, the good thing is if you are, for example, in the international um, management specialization, you can choose all within your specialization, but if you consider one of the other specialization also is super interesting, uh, we kind of open it up so can, you can pick one from the other specialization, but in total it has to be three mm -hmm. and the majority, it, yeah, minimum of two has to be in line with your specialization, uh -huh. So, but it's three in total. Okay, great. And I think that for MBA full, it was also mentioned from five, should, you should three, right? Yeah, perfect. Just to make it sure. Uh, Okay, how many months are reserved to write the thesis? Let me ask this question to both of you. Let me now start maybe with Stephanie. Mm -hmm. um, for the full-time MBA program, you have four months um, for the for writing your master thesis. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And for Master of Science program? That uh, also applies for the Master of Science. Mm -hmm. And at this point, it's also important to say that you um, have a supervisor um, that is uh, usually a professor that's been teaching uh, in your program. So someone you are familiar with and uh, they guide you throughout the writing process to make sure that you are on the right track. So it's nothing you do all by yourself, but you get uh, guidance. But of course, it's your individual project. Okay, amazing. Thank you. Now question for the 
part time, although it was really shortly mentioned. Uh, can non EU students actually apply for part time in terms of visa issues? Um, they can, but it has to be discussed with my colleague, who is the expert yeah. <laughs> in terms of uh, visa and part time studying in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that some of their students, they um, they did get a visa for that. Um, not a oh. study visa, but um, a different one. Oh, great. Great. That's so good. Maybe the person can send me an email and um, I will forward it to my colleague. Yeah. So, dear attendee, you can see uh, two emails that I mentioned in the chat. Please copy the one that is about MBA full. <laughs> so, yeah, and then you'll get the help. But it's already a very good note uh, from uh, Stephanie. So, next question is, uh, what is the amount of first payment to secure the acceptance and when is it due? Let me ask both of you. Uh, Anne? That's um, the same for both programs. So okay. as, as soon as you receive an admission letter, you have three weeks to make up your mind and you confirm uh, the offer by paying 1,000 euro. Mm -hmm. This is part of the overall tuition fee. So mm -hmm. it's not a, it's not an extra fee. It's yeah. part of the total tuition fee. So it's 1,000 you have to yeah, pay within one, uh, three weeks, sorry, three weeks. Okay. Good. Thanks also for underlining that it's not something extra. It's important to know also. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, okay. Regarding this topic of application, I see I saw the question uh, that is relevant to it. Let me quickly check it. Okay. Oh, here it is. So if I apply now, you will already process the application? Yes. Yeah. I mean, right. we will look at the application every day. Um, we will check them. And as soon as everything is complete and we've Found that the application is suitable, we will arrange um, an individual uh, video interview. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Great. Um, okay. So I think you already, uh, Stephanie, addressed th this question towards the end of the presentation. The question was, can one study German alongside studies? And I think you clearly mentioned that, yes, it's also advised to do that. Mm -hmm. Check this question. If you want to add something on the German studying, please go yeah, ahead. I, I would like to add something. So this is um, we usually offer different levels of German that depends on the level our students are in. Um, but this is just to get started with. So in many of our, like let's say 90% of our students, uh, they also want to you know, work in Germany afterwards. And mm -hmm. of course, it's very important to have excellent German skills when you look for a job in Germany. So uh, for those who get started with the German beginner courses at our institute uh, in autumn, this is really just a kickstart. But you, you have to take it to the next level. You have to continuously learn German or improve your German if you're already on B level, because this is required. I mean, Berlin is an international, like you have many companies that have a, a, a provide an international work uh, environment or operate internationally, but uh, many employers uh, still want their employees to have German language skills. So this mm -hmm. is I think, very important for you to know. The earlier you get started, the better. Uh, we also, yeah, we also provide classes, but this is this is just where it starts. This is not where where it ends. So, end, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good advice. No, that's actually very important advice, especially if you are planning to stay in Germany long term. Yeah, yeah that would be amazing. At least be one, then you can already do something. Yeah, nice <laughs> with that. Okay, great. Um, so regarding the job, it was mentioned this issue. Let me address maybe this question from Assad, and you can add also dear uh, dear guests if you want. So, do you get a visa extension after completion of studies to look for a job? Yes. So you are entitled actually to that. There's no way you will say they the uh, the authorities will say tell you no. So you will get uh, eighteen months, one and a half year to find a job after finalizing your studies in Germany. So this is for everyone equally. Uh, but if you would like to add something, please. Oh, it's fine. Okay, great. Yeah, this is, I saw this also very useful for stu international students, so you can use this opportunity. Um, all right. So next question. What do you mean by individual coaching? Um, it refers to the um, development, um, the skills development seminar. Mm -hmm. So, um, as I said before, there is a management reflection seminar, a profile is uh, going to be created for each student. 
and um, you can have a talk with the with the lecturer and he or she um, can give you advice um, how to develop further in terms of um, skills and um, yeah personality soft skills okay perfect uh, next question is are these consecutive programs can students from different disciplines also get an admission yes that's actually the point of, of, of the programs we, we offer is that they are, they are let's say, designed for, for people with all kinds of uh, academic backgrounds and with all kinds of different uh, professional experience. Uh, so uh, they all have a different profile. And uh, we, we haven't mentioned yet that, that we uh, admit a maximum of approximately 25 students. So it's, the groups are very, very small. It's very intense. So you're not number 114 and you don't get lost in the crowd. You will be in a room with uh, 24 students and you have really very intense work with the lecturers, with your fellow students. And um, yeah, and uh, you will benefit from, from that diverse work experience, professional experience. So this will really broaden your mindset uh, in international wise, professional wise. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect. Very good. Now the question that is on all webinars, let me combine there are a couple of them. Uh, so are there any scholarships of financial aid available? And the second is more specific if there, there are scholarships for specifically for Philippine students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are tuition fees, and uh, we talk about a um, quite a uh, great amount of money. That's that's right. But as we are part of a public uh, a public school, we we do not offer or we're not able to offer scholarships. But what we do is, when you receive the admission letter, we have prepared uh, an information sheet uh, that gives you a broad overview of how to finance your studies. So, uh, but our school, our institute itself, does not. Uh, offer scholarships. Okay. Dear attendees, I now put in the chat some general scholarship opportunities that might be useful for you. Also, you can check them out and you can use it also maybe towards your living, covering your living costs. That also will be very helpful. Um, so regarding the fees again, uh, how many terms for the tuition fee installment? So... Um. In how many installments? I, so I, I understand this question as how, in how many installments can we pay? <laughs> I think the first plan is um, you have three payments mm -hmm. and the others is six. Okay. So you have three bigger amounts and mm -hmm. or you can choose six installments with um, smaller amounts. Uh -huh. Okay, perfect. Um, so next question is, I've heard that when writing a thesis with company, it usually takes longer than six months because companies ask to do an internship at first. What is your experience in this regard? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the writing period is really, it, it's fixed. It is four months and uh, uh, there is no difference between like writing a, a thesis, let's say on your own or in or if you're writing in cooperation with a company, it, it is six months. And uh, well, some students um, they look for a working student uh, working student position during the second term, and that's when they you know uh, kind of uh, connect with companies uh, and uh, yeah because it's not really possible to have an internship with four of them at least because you are studying full time, mm -hmm. so working student positions are the ones uh, that work with your studies um, and but no I lost it. So, but, yeah, not a, but not a full-time internship. No. Okay. And it, it is four months. It's it's fixed. And uh, yeah, when it, if you're an international student and then you have a student visa, you are only allowed to work a specific amount of, of days or hours. Yeah. So this is uh, also there. There are restrictions, uh, but it is possible to work. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If you need detailed information about it, just drop us an email and we can let you know how many hours, how many yeah days a week. Uh, but first of all, it's of course your studies uh, that have highest priority. But I mentioned that at the beginning, also your career uh, plays an important role or like heading towards to your, your career goal. So of course you, but you can manage both, but after the first part is completed, because first you need to get to know, okay, what does it mean to study at this institute? What is required? And then students, you know, look for 
uh, student working job. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, when uploading documents, do we convert ECTS and GPA or you do it for us? Mm, there is a section in our online application tool where you um, have to enter your GPA. Mm -hmm. If you are not familiar with the German um, conversion, we can send you a link um, to a website uh, where you can find more details about the German GPA conversion. Yeah, and I will quickly also drop two links just in general, dear attendees, to familiarize yourself because the yeah, German GPA is a very interesting thing <laughs> compared to international GPA. So, and you will find you will find out what I mean by that. So, uh, use these links if you want just to now already see uh, how, what does it mean, and then yeah, of course, then uh, our friends from Berlin will help you out more with that. Um, what is the time frame and percentage of employability of alumna? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a very important question. Uh, and it's uh, not a question I can just, you know, answer with like, it's uh, three months and uh, I, I cannot uh, like break it down to, to one mm -hmm. precise answer because that uh, it depends on, on the profile of, uh, of the al alumni. It depends on, on the fact if they're looking for a career switch uh, or if they are still in line with the job and the industry they've been working for before. Uh, before, so there are many factors that that um, yeah that play you know that have an influence on that. So, mm -hmm. but for for some students, they already have or like get full time job offers uh, before they actually graduate. So, like uh, in autumn, right before, it's usually one or two students that have a, that already have a full time job. Some people get it right after they graduate, or some for some it might even take uh, six months. So that's really um, there's no no precise answer to that. Mm -hmm. But we, as I said, we have our career and alumni service. We have individual counseling and guidance. We offer uh, application workshops, like how to, yeah, how to write your CV letter, uh, your CV and your cover letter, uh, salary negotiation, uh, job interview preparation. So uh, we are there for you uh, to help you with that. And also after you graduate, you can still like contact our, our team and say, hey, it's been like three months. I think I need your help. Can you check my application document? Maybe something is missing and I'm not aware of. So this, you know, you can always stay connected with us and, and make use of the services. So. Perfect. Great. Thank you very much. That's quite a useful information also. Uh, another question is, what is the median and average age of a typical batch? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you like to start, Anna, or? So, um, the average age for the MSc program um, is usually uh, 26, 27, uh, mm -hmm. because only one year or a minimum of one year of work, postgraduate work experience is required. So um, there are also students that have like three or four years, but uh, we are more in the younger professional range, uh, whereas uh, for the uh, full-time or MBA students, it's a, a little older, if you know the precise yeah. number. Yeah, for the MBA students, we have an average age of uh, 32, 33 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, and the the age yeah, range is from 25, end of 20s um, until the middle of 40s. Mm -hmm. Anyways, dear Assad, you can see quite young groups. I would still call them all of them young groups, so that's good. Uh, do you help a student visa after confirmation of that mission. So do you help students with visa after confirmation of that mission? We we do not have uh, like a visa service at our school and we are also not the experts for that, but we will support you with um, documents you need. For example, if you need a separate um, letter confirming that you are going to be a student at our institute, um, we can issue that for you. Um, but, yeah, but visa service is not included um, in our services. Mm -hmm. And I, I just also dropped in the chat that article. We have several articles regarding visa issue because sometimes it's very problematic in, spe special, in specific countries. And there you can find various information about visa types, about visa specifics, when you should apply, how you should apply, how long you should wait, which documents you would need definitely. 
all this general information, you can uh, refer to our articles also. You can find some general information. And yeah, of course, as Stefanie said, it's always good uh, that you have this letter also from the school and they will provide it with you to you. So it should not be a problem. Yeah, and as George, as well, yes, please. Yeah, you mentioned it, that the timing is um, is crucial. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because usually um, app the visa application process uh, takes several months. Um, mm -hmm. So the earlier you complete the, the study program application, uh, the earlier you can get started with the visa application. So that's why we, we recommend everyone who, who, who needs a visa to, you know, gather your documents, get in touch with us uh, if you need any assistance with the online application or whatever, but get the application for the program started as soon as possible. Um, and keep in mind, you still have three weeks to make up your mind. So you have some mm -hmm. time after the, the interview, but... Uh, mm -hmm. The earlier, the better, um, also with regards to housing, because you need the confirmation that you're going to be a student to apply for a room in the dormitories. So there's mm -hmm. uh, many steps after the uh, official admission uh, that yeah. take lots of time. So the earlier, the better. Yeah, that's that's totally very, very good advice, I would say, because I was myself a student, a uh, foreign student in Germany. So I know that this is a really good advice. And uh, also, um, yeah, I mean, the th good thing about rolling, you, this was the rolling deadline, right? Is that you can apply today already. So, and it will be already processed your application. So it's a very good to, in terms of planning accordingly for visa, especially mm -hmm. if you are from one of those big countries where I've heard that sometimes it can take even one year. So yeah, I was, uh, for me, it was really fast. It was like three weeks, but for many, I have heard months and even one year. So please make up your minds and apply. <laughs> uh, yeah. And also, and, yeah, sorry please. to interrupt you. Um, no, no, no. Okay. We also require a language uh, proficiency test result uh, that should not be older than two, two three oh. years. Um, if you don't have one right now, if you, or if yours is older than two, three years, you can still get started with the application. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's no problem to submit it later at a later point, but we really want to get you through and to get the interview done. And uh, yeah, so everything else can be submitted later and then receive the official admission, but the earlier, the better. Mm -hmm. Let me from my side also ask this question, as you mentioned, these uh, st tests, just to make sure for if the students, for example, completed their studies, bachelor's fully in English, will they, will you still require a uh, TOEFL IELTS or similar? Yeah. It depends um, in which country they yeah. have graduated. So all English speaking countries like the US, UK, um, New Zealand, Australia, South um, Africa, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you have studied completely in English, for example, in Italy, mm -hmm. it's not going to be accepted yeah. as an English proficiency um, test result. Yeah, that's also good to know. Thank you very much, Stephanie, for sharing the details. Oops, I accidentally clicked on this, but let me ask this question because Anna, you mentioned about housing and it was a question actually about housing, uh, about dormitories. So what about housing and especially in Berlin? Do you have dormitories? <laughs> yes, there are dormitories, but they are not uh, administered by the universities. There is uh, the student union uh, that uh, that are in charge of the dormitories. Uh, so we don't, because uh, in many countries you have universities that have their own dormitories, but we, we don't, so it's a different system here. And uh, it's actually the easiest way and also the, the cheapest way to get yeah. uh, a place to live. But um, there are also long waiting lists. Um, so <laughs> you shouldn't put everything on that dormitory card. You have to also check uh, housing platforms and inform everyone you know that you're gonna to move to Berlin and start your studies. Uh, yeah, you really, the housing market is, is, is crazy, but everyone got a place to live uh, when they started their studies, but uh, it's also, it's not easy. You have to check every day several times. It's quite time consuming, but um, yeah. yeah, so don't put everything on the dormitory card. Uh, you might be lucky, um, but you, yeah, should also mm -hmm. keep all other options open. Yeah, definitely. For example, this in Germany, they're called Vegas, dear attendees, mm -hmm. so uh, shared rooms and shared flats, which is yeah. also very popular. After the dormitories, maybe this is the most popular yes. for international students. So, yeah, when you come here, and I, I'm sure that from the university, they will also share with you some details about the platforms because there are plenty of platforms where you can search for the flat so that 
you can find for sure the room, not flat, but room. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, dormitories are the best option as Anna mentioned, definitely quite below the market prices. Always, but that's why there's a hunting for these rooms. And especially I imagine what happens in Berlin in this regard, because yeah, I was in a in smaller city compared, but still all, all over Germany, it's quite a hunting for dormitories. So that's why you have to apply as soon as possible. I would suggest you even as soon as you apply for the program, or maybe after the interview, just, mm -hmm. just apply. And if you're lucky, you'll get it. If not, no problem. You can find for other opportunities. So yeah, also you need to act uh, swiftly in this regard. So next question is, if I get job offer during my full-time MBA, can I change to part-time? Interesting question. Uh, I think you <laughs> could. Actually, I didn't have that case. Um, I don't know, Anna, do you know mm. that happened before? Not yet, but I uh, I don't think it should be a problem because then you, you're you going to get like a, a work permit and the work permit allows you to 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 study, you know, if you're an international who needs a visa, then you no, know, it should be fine. Yeah, because yeah. from the content, it should be fine because the modules are the same. Um, sometimes the lecturer is different, but um, the content is the same. So it should be from an organizational side, it should be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, what is the average salary of the alumni uh, in the first year after completion of studies? Statistics question again. Yeah. That's also a, a, um, a question that I cannot answer. With, yeah. like, I cannot give you a precise answer to. It depends on the, the level you start in. If, if you, example, one of the students that have a total career switch, of course, you will not start as a senior or executive uh, mm -hmm. if it's something totally new. You also have to go through the development. Uh, and uh, yeah. that's why that, yeah, that also relates to, to the salary. Um, it depends on the industry, of course. IT is uh, super well paid. Uh, if, yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> if you drop me an email and let me know where you're going to head, and if I know your background, I might give you a more precise answer. But, <laughs> you know, I don't want to promise anything. And then you say, but Anna said uh, I get like this <laughs> that much, and now I ended up with less. So, yeah, it really, it always depends on the profile, the, the level you start with, and uh, your background. Yeah, that's. Yeah. What I can say, Asad, very general question, you'll be fine. So, and as time goes by, you will get better and better. So do not worry about this in Germany. And last question for today is, please, if I may ask and confirm, a student from Africa who has no knowledge in German language cannot apply. We cannot use our English proficiency. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I mean, German is not required, right, at all? German is not required. Um and uh, of, of course, you can apply. You just need to, to provide an uh, English proficiency test result. If you are not from South Africa. If you are from mm -hmm. South Africa, then uh, that's you fine. Do yeah. need that test, right? Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. If you are from other parts of Africa, just provide TOEFL, IELTS, or anything that. Duolingo, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, Duolingo also works. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Nice, very good. So I have official now. Let me open the official where my slide for thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, thanks, dear attendees, for joining and for your interest, for interesting questions as well. You can see the emails in the chat for our guests. So if you have general question to ask, because there were some questions regarding visa, regarding working visa or etc., scholarships, get in touch with us or also read our articles that I suggested. You will find there lots of information. If you have some follow-up questions or, uh, for our guests, some questions of understanding, you can get in touch with them. You have their emails. They showed it during their presentation and you can also see them in the chat. So yeah, they will be happy to help you as you could understand. They're very friendly and helpful. So yeah, that's it from my side. Of course, thanks to our guests also for wonderful presentations and for, yeah, onto the point answers to the questions. Dear attendees, good luck with your applications. And dear guests, I hope to see you on our future webinars as well. Take care and bye-bye.